Hello and welcome to Unfinished Business. An exhibition of pieces about grief, loss and death. This exhibition was uh, inspired, ironically enough, by uh, my family grave. And I remember being at the gravesite and looking at the headstone and thinking, my God, what's going on here? There, there was so much going on. There was uh, rosary beads, there are photographs engraved, there are crosses, there are flags. And around the gravestone itself, they have cherubs and plaques and even nightlights. I mean, it's like a disco for the dead. I mean, it just was too much. And I remember thinking, this is just awful. This is tacky. And then a bit later on, realizing that actually what we were doing was telling the story of the people who lay there. Uh, it took me a long time to realize that, but when I did, I got to thinking that actually what I was doing was painting pictures that were telling stories, the same stories for the same people. And this is how Unfinished Business came to be. This piece is called Angel, and I painted it after my brother passed away. Uh, it's probably far and away the most naive piece I've done in that it's it's obviously uh, about him and it's obviously him leaving uh, and, and him passing away. I don't particularly like this piece but what I do like about it and what's important about it is that it's my first step towards saying how I felt when I didn't have the words uh, to say outright to uh, family. And th this was painted uh, for uh, my family and I gave it to them uh, to express to them how I felt at that time. Pylons, pylons in the rain standing, surmising we are pylons. Pylons in the rain shrinking, limp to the vein. Where are the cemeteries? We sift through the debris, but we're only given clues. Please help us to make sense of the shadows. The wardens are of little help. What they see in our handwriting frightens them, and so we are fogged off with lipstick head squares, sewed to celluloid kisses. Only the discipline of chaos protects us. Mary can't talk with a lollipop in her mouth. Her gob has been stopped, sir. We feel suspicion. She looks towards us and her hands say, Can't you kiss me like you used to? Oh, love. He's gone, poor love. He floats, repeating, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Michael, that was three different pieces brought together as one for this project. Yeah. Can you just go into a bit more detail? Of it? Yeah, well, the one I started with was the Tuesday people. And then I brought in two other pieces as well. And I just felt that they sounded right together for your project. You know, I would rehearse walking up the road and go through it. And different pieces that sounded right together, I put together. I didn't sit down and edit it with a piece of paper. It, I did it like that. It does sound like one, one uh, piece. It, it, it begins with song and ends with song. And is that how they are in their original forms? So is the mm. song a part of them? Uh, I use song a lot in what I do, but with this particular piece, it was one song called Pylons, where I took two sections of that and put it together with the Tuesday people and a monologue as well. It's based on the fall of Lucifer and how I wondered if halfway down did he regret his decision? only to find that it was too late to come back anyway. Um, it's clearly based on, on my brother who I've already spoken about and who is the um, subject of Angel as well. Um, as an image in itself, it didn't quite work. I never quite got there, but it is something that I would hope to revisit, uh, maybe to paint anew or to work on this one again. But as it stands, this is it, unfinished. This one is called Kevin, uh, simply enough, it's called After My Brother. Um, this is him, 
who in death has become uh, a titan, um, as, as people do in death. They grow in stature. And in this one, he, he is the picture. It, uh, he is enormous. Uh, he's also life. In, in a lot of my pictures, uh, there, are, there are trees which are, which are life, which are about strength. And he, he is the tree. The tree is part of him. And, and it completely encircles him. Uh, it's since become a him. It's also about the, the people in his life who were there for him and who weren't. There are two women here, um, one of whom is quite faint, who wasn't there when she needed him, and one who is quite strong, who, who is my mother actually, who is his mother, who was there for him all the way. So they're very much part of him and they support him to different degrees. Would you like a little piece of gum? Just a little piece of gum now? Just an itty bitty piece of gum? Is she clever? Nah. I was a real wallflower, a real zero grader, as my brother would say. He's dead now. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know what to say. It felt like nothing, and then it felt like everything. So I guess I let life pass me by. Knock back a pill here and there. We're all weak, I guess. Can we all just get along? We're all God's children after all. Just a little piece of gum, no? Just an itty bitty piece of gum? Well, she is a great, great mind. I hope she grows up to be so healthy and strong. Oh, and sweetheart, one day you're gonna wish you gave up all the gum in the world. And so what, what is it? about these three pieces together that you think suits the, the, the theme of this, this project? Well, your piece is about death, and uh, there's a lot of death in the Tuesday people. Uh, it was a piece that was written quite a while ago about a care home for the elderly, and I wrote that as a piece for the page, but I've since sort of approached it in a more performance-based way, and I just really felt it was appropriate for what you were doing, it was a really nice piece to go back to and edit in with different other pieces that were more performance based. I really enjoyed putting those three pieces together. And so it wasn't difficult to go back and revisit those? No, no, I really enjoyed putting it together. As I say, I came up the road to work, walking up Johnson Terrace and rehearsing it through each morning with a cup of coffee in my hand. And it wasn't difficult to go back to it. It was, it was nice to look back on a piece that was written for the page and approach it from a more performance-based uh, way. This is again about Kevin and uh, this is quite clearly him, I think. He is um, he's thin and slender and sort of weak in areas but his, ch his chest is really strong, his, his heart is really strong. Um, his head is bowed, not in shame, but in just in, um, I think, just just sorrow and just sadness. Uh, the tree here, the hanging tree, um, he's holding onto, it's his, it's part of him. Um, you can see it's scorched, it's burnt, there's no life here. It's very, it's very stark. Um, what it doesn't have is, is, is a noose. Um, this one doesn't need it. This one, I actually had no idea what it was about for a long, long time, uh, and actually didn't think it was about anything, and was not going to show it at all. But looking at it recently, as I've been looking at all of the pieces, I've actually realised that it is uh, my parents and their relationship. I originally called this uh, Two-Face because we've got one face this way and another that way. Um, and I've realised that this is my father. Not because he was two-faced, 
but because he projected one image, whereas in fact he was a completely different person. Outwardly a very strong person, but inwardly very much needed his partner for support. Uh, and similarly, this being my mother on this side, um, a sort of a bowed figure, um, but with a, with a very strong headdress, with a very, almost like a crown of, of hair. Um, and I think it depicts the, the way that she supported him by letting him um, be the king of his own castle. In the TV room, we cough and hack, and the doctors are persuasive, oily backwards sliding over our heads, proclaiming step, only one more step proceeding, until the hole in the ground is dug and filled. Tommy, we lay a rose, on the train, another excursion, we saw your face disbelieving, and when you waved from behind those clear, clear sheets, we saw a sad old boy who could never look towards us and say, I feel lost. Now he's gone high, 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 high above the wine, the Hollywood sign, high than the junkie on Franklin and Vine, high to the bubble bath in the sky. Home, home, we are home, home, we are home, home, we are home. Our wreaths for the airborne say home, fly home now, and we sink, fighting. Because every day a suitcase is packed. Every day. Goodbye. The typical notion of poetry is that it's very solitary, it's very, mm. it's very confined, very, um, very personal, very private. And what you've done is taken something that is very personal, very private, and made it into a performance piece. Why perform it? Why, why, why sing it? Why, why say it so loud? I know it's there's different stages with that. There's the writing stage first of all, which is very private, and that's for yourself. And then it gets to the point with certain pieces that they need to be performed. I think this is why I started doing performance poetry. I did acting, and separately I wrote poetry. But it got to the point where I wrote a piece in two thousand and one that needed to be performed, and it was always written to be performed. The two things just naturally came together for me at that point. So there was the very private process of writing it, where there were notes that I was putting together all year, and then the piece I started with, a 15 minute piece, were written suddenly over four days. When I visited Sam, my friend in Birmingham, four days of putting notes in her living room floor, everything came together with uh, Under the Pink by Tori Amos playing in the background, mm -hmm. on repeat playing the softness of the music made me want to write something really hard and brutal. This is uh, a family portrait. <laughs> uh, this is my brother Kevin. This is my father here. Um, both quite raw figures. Um, not necessarily because they're angry, although I think it, it does look quite angry. I think it looks like there's a lot of uh, rage here. Um, more that they were powerful people. They had very strong personalities, and, and that's where the sort of the rawness comes through. Um, this, this I imagine is me, um, sort of smaller in life than they are in death. Um, and also just because of the nature of it, it it's almost like a wave, you know, the, the grey hair is like a wave or it's uh, thunder clouds, there's, there's a real strength going in that direction. It wasn't initially painted for them, but as soon as it was done, I realised that it was their personalities in particular. Uh, the assumption would be, I think, that this is her and this is him, but actually it's not. Each character is a mix of both of them. Um, they both have a stoic uh, sensibility, a, a quietness about them, a, a calmness, which is here. Um, but equally, there's a strength, there's a force uh, that they both have as well, which is here. And it, it's very deliberately black and red. It's very deliberately 
one strong colour with one particularly dark colour, um, because that's what they're like. They're, they're, there are quietnesses and there are strengths about the pair. This one, uh, for no particular reason, I called all, because this seems to be um, a very clear and definite end to the series of pictures that we just looked at. It brings together everything um, that I felt or talked about in, in those images, and there are a couple of things. There, there's a there's a new growth here. There's a new there's a new tree. There's a bud. So there's life coming through, and there's, there's a tree here again, which is which. Is coming from this hand, um, which is actually my hand. Um, this this is my story. This is this is where I am. This I think is my father here again. This is this is Kevin. Um, there is a centre here. Uh, there's a wheel here. There's a there's a life here and a light, which isn't very bright yet, but which I'm hoping will be. Uh, maybe it'll appear in other pictures. Maybe it won't. Um, but. This is the centre of things at the moment, and this is what I'm hoping the centre of things will be, um, but a lot brighter. Now he's gone high, 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 high above the wild Hollywood sign, higher than the junkie on Franklin and Vine, high to the bubble bath in the sky. Home, home, we are home, home, we are home, home, we are home.